number one tip is making the eyes and lips pop and doing this one thing can drastically improve the way your image looks now all you have to do is create a stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift button it's e once you create a stamp visible layer just come to your action now if you don't have my action i believe in the quick i get it for free in the show below so once you install and open the action just click on this on sharpo eyes and lips mask right here and that action is just going to load and all you have to do is just pick a normal brush tool with your layer mask selected make sure you're using the white brush opacity set to 100 flow set to 100 and just paint white on the eyes like this also do the same thing for here and also do the same thing for the lips and this will drastically improve the way your image looks now just take a look at the before and after this is the before and the after <laughs> the before and the after cool right but that's just one of the 10 tips i have for you throughout this video now tip number two is lens blur now the lens blur allows us to blur the background of our image and gives us a nice bouquet or bokeh and the good part is that it's customizable and very very easy to use let me show you how it works so once you create a stamp visible layer just come to your filter come to your camera filter right here now with the camera filter open just scroll all the way down until you see lens blur okay so this is the lens blur right here all i have to do right now is to click on apply i just going to apply the lens blur effect and blur this background for me and like i said earlier it's customizable so you can choose to adjust the amount of blur you want you can either increase it or you can choose to reduce it depending on what you want all right once i apply that you can see this is the before and the after and from here you can choose to just add more amount so if you come to the blur amount you can choose to take it all the way up and make the background even more blurry and also you can choose to change the post of the bouquet so you can choose to take it up and take it down now here is the good part let's say i want to bring back some parts right here which i feel is blurred out all i have to do is click on this focus brush right here under this will find click on focus brush and from here i can choose to select the amount of focus i want the feathering the flow and the brush size all right so let's say i want to bring back the handle right here. all i have to do is just brush right here i'm just going to bring back that place on focus so i'm going to take the focus amount up to 100 so you can see so it's just going to make that place back in focus so you have the ability to actually customize the kind of blur you want now let's say i want to blur it back all i have to do is come to my blur brush right here and just brush inside like this i'm just going to blur that particular place with the blur brush like so all right so like i said earlier it's really customizable now once you feel you're done just click on okay so take a look at before and after this is the before and this is the after now let me know if you have ever tried this feature inside of camera let me know in the comments the third tip is target this specific color using the point color inside of camera now with this option you can actually target specific color and make adjustment to specific color let me show you how it works once you open your image inside of camera just scroll all the way down and under this color mixer you're going to see mixer and point color so just click on point color right here with this point color you can just use this picker tool to target specific color so let's say I want to target the blues on this image. So I'm going to click on this blue right here. And I want only this shade of blue to be selected. I don't want this other shade of blue to be selected. All I have to do is scroll all the way down and just narrow the range to only that blue. And if you want to see where it's selected, just click on this range icon right here. Just hide it. Now you can see only these two colors are selected. Now I don't want this other shade of blue to be selected. I only want this shade of blue to be selected. All I have to do is just come to this feather icon right here and just move it inside. So as soon as I move it inside, you can see this other shade of blue is no longer selected and we only have this shade of blue. So right now, any adjustment I make right now is just going to affect only that shade of blue. It's not going to be affecting the other shades of blues. So if I also make a selection of the yellows, so if I come to this point icon again, just make a selection of the yellows and just turn this color range. Now, if I don't want this shade of yellow to be selected, all I have to do is just play with the range and just take it out from this shade of yellow so that I can have only the main yellow which I want selected. And from here, once I turn it on, I can just play with the hue and saturation of the yellows and just going to affect only those yellow color right there. So this is how you can target specific colors using this pointer icon. And once you feel you're okay, just press on okay and just going to open back inside of Photoshop. Now, next time if you target specific color on your image, use the point color. And tip number four is reducing the opacity of your focus separation if necessary. So let's say I'm retouching this image and I feel the image is looking too smooth. So what I can do is just come to my mixer brush tool right here. So if I just come to this layer right here, which I use my mixer brush tool to brush on the image. So if I turn it off, you're going to see the before and after. So this is the before and the after. 
And if you feel it's too much, you can just come your, to your opacity and just reduce the opacity of this brush layer to bring back more details or more texture on your image. So that's just a quick tip, which I use most of the time if necessary. But this image doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave it at 100%. But if it's too much, just reduce the opacity. Just a quick tip for you. And tip number five is sky replacement. So let's say you want to replace your sky. All you have to do is come to your edit, come to your sky replacement right here. And from here, you have different sky options to choose from. So if I just click on this drop-down icon, you can see different variety of sky. So if your sky is smoothy and you want to replace it, you can just select anyone right here. So once I select this sky right here, Photoshop will automatically replace the sky for me. And the good thing about this is that you have manual control over it. So you can choose to just move it manually or you can use the slider right here. You can choose to increase the brightness if you want by taking this brightness slider up. You can choose to change the colors of the temperature. So if I take it to this side, I'm just making the sky more cooler. And if I take it to this side, I'm making the sky more warmer. So basically you have manual control over it. So you have different variety of sky to choose from. So let me just select this one right here and see. So you can see, I really don't like this. Let's select this. Now if you don't like anyone here, just click on this plus icon right here and just add your own sky. So from here, you can bring in your own sky if you want. So I don't have any sky, so I'm going to cancel it. So that's how you can actually replace sky. So if you have a moody sky or a dark sky, and you want to just replace your sky in general, you can use this tip to actually replace your sky inside of Photoshop. And tip number six is using the liquify tool. With the liquify tool, you can alter the shape of your subject or the face of your subject and make it look more better. Now let me show you how it works. So just come to your filter, come to liquify right here. Now let's say I want to make the jaw of this image slim. All I have to do is click on this face icon right here and just move this jaw inside the bit and just going to make it look slim. And also I can choose to make the lips a little bit bigger or smaller if I want. So depending on what you want. And also, let's say I want to make the tummy of the subject slim. All I have to do is pick on this um, warp tool right here. Once I click on this for warp tool, I'm just going to increase my brush size and just move these parts inside like this, just to give the subject a little bit of shape and just make it look good. Don't get me wrong, this image looks good already. But if you want to make it a little bit more slim, this is how you can actually do it. All right, now see the before and the after. The before and the after. Just a quick tip. When you using the liquify tool, you don't have to do it too much. Just do it minimum because if you do it too much, you are going to alter the face or the shape of your subject and just going to make the image look fake and look ugly. So just make a minor or small changes when using the liquify tool. So when you feel it's okay, just click on okay. You can see this is the before and the after. The before and the after looks so much better. And tip number seven is blend this. So with blend this, you can actually add specific adjustments to your highlight area or your shadow area. So let's say I want to add shine to the highlight area. All I have to do is come to my adjustment layer, click on curves adjustment layer, and just move this part up like this. So right now you can see it's affecting both the shadow and the highlight part, but we want it to affect only the highlights of this image. So to do that, I'm not going to right click on this empty layer right here, on this empty part right here rather, and just open my blending option. Now with the blending option open, under this blend if, just come to the underlying layer and just move it away from the shadow area like this because we want to apply it only on the highlight area. So let this work for me. Now you can see the edges are off. Now to smooth out that edges, just hold alternate and split this shadow slider and just move this part towards the highlight part. And you can choose to move this part back a little bit like this. So you can see we've applied that effect only to the highlights area using blend if. So just click on OK. Now let's see the before and after. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. So that's how this blend if actually works. Now that brings us to tip number eight, which is two of vertical. So two of vertical simply means duplicating your screen into two. So let me show you how it works. So let's say I want to do micro dodger bond for this image. All I have to do is come to my windows come to my arrange and first of all i'm going to create a new windows for this image right here now after i do that i'm going to come back to my windows again click on arrange and just click on two of vertical right now so you can see we have the same image but two different screens all right so if i just zoom in this one right here any adjustment i make on this one i'm going to be seeing it three times on this other screen right here so let's i want to do the jump bond i come back to my action and just click on dodge and bond right here once i click on dodge and bond so let's say I want to dodge the nose. So I'll pick my normal brush tool. Any adjustment I make right here, if I just paint on the nose, you can see it's affecting this image right here every time. So if I come here and I just paint on this, you're going to see the effects every time on this other image. And I swear, if I paint on this other image right here, 
you are going to see the effect real time on this other image right here because the both image are actually the same so this is the before and the after the before and the after so i usually do this when doing micro dodge and burn once you feel you're done you can just delete one and you are good to go so i'm going to delete this dodge and burn layer because i basically did rubbish i'm going to delete it so that's how the two of vertical works and how you can actually use it and tip number nine is masking and masking is very very important when you're touching an image inside of photoshop now let me show you how it works now let's say i want to make the eyes bright all i have to do is come back to my adjustment layer again come to cover the layer take this part up now since i want to apply it only on the eyes you can see the layer mask right here all i have to do is invert this mask by pressing on ctrl i am just going to invert the mask so once i invert that mask i'm just going to paint with a white brush opacity set 100 flow set 100 on only the part which i want to reveal that effect on so i want to reveal it on the eyes i'm going to paint on the eyes like this and do the same thing for this part so this is the before and this is the after and you can apply marks to anything inside of photoshop whether filter or adjustment layer now let's use filter so let's i want to blur the whole image and focus on the face and after this create a stamp visible layer i press no control shift button it's a and come to filter come to blur come to regression blur and just click on ok now let's use a blur of 64 click on ok now with masking i can actually bring back the focus on the face so just come to your mask right here add a mask pick a normal brush tool now since the mask is on white i'm just going to use the black brush to hide the mask from that particular place so paint on the face and just going to hide that mask from the face now with the help of masking you can see we brought back the focus on the face so the before and the after all right now tip number 10 is reducing the flow or opacity of your brushes all right so let's say i want to retouch this image let's just do focus separation and show you how that works all right so let me just delete this layer ctrl j duplicate layer come back to my action come back to focus separation and uh, let's use 15 for this image click on ok now i pick my close thumb tool come to my high frequency layer right here just zoom all the way in now if i press alternate to sample and just remove the blemishes it's just going to remove the blemishes 100 percent and sometimes it's just going to make that particular place look flat as you can see so this is the before and the after but if you don't want it to look flat let me just undo it by pressing on ctrl z to undo all right now if you don't want this place to look flat all you have to do is come to your opacity of your close thumb tool instead of using 100 percent opacity just change your opacity from 100 to about 50 percent so that way if you sample and brush over the blemishes it's not going to remove the blemishes totally it's just going to remove the blemishes by 50 percent so that place is not going to look flat we still have the blemishes but the blemishes are not that obvious all right so this is the before and the after and you can also do the same thing using your normal brush tool or when using your mixer brush tool all right so if you feel the intensity is too much you can just bring back the flow or the opacity of any kind of brush you are using i hope you found this tip useful when retouching or editing your image inside of photoshop and if you want to learn how to retouch your image check out this playlist right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative